So first, let's kind of take a step towards what programs do we use for design. So my name is Michael, and I work at NWA 3D. And we're basically just going to touch base over the printers and kind of how to utilize them. And then you can either relay this information, or if you wanted to, you could always schedule a second training uh, for a student or a girl that would like to train specifically. So um, first off, we're going to go over the first step to print, and that is actually designing or making. We recommend using uh, two programs that are both free and they're completely web-based, so you don't have to do too much effort into it. Um, the first one's going to be called Tinkercad. So T-I-N-K-E-R-C-A-D, Tinkercad.com. And basically, it's a modeling environment where you drag and drop shapes into an area. And by combining all of those shapes and grouping them together, you get a object. And that's really all there is to Tinkercad, so it's pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, and then on top of that, we have a second program called Onshape, and that's just O-N-S-H-A-P-E. And what Onshape is, is more of a traditional CAD program, so you create a sketch or a beginning shape or initial setup. So like if I were to sketch a rectangle, then after I finished my sketch of my rectangle, I could actually extrude it from that area, is the word that it uses and it basically would create a rectangular prism beneath it. So that's kind of more of what a traditional CAD program is. So you know, you could put like an at sign in it and pull it up and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of options to utilize. Um, so it's a great way to make like trinkets or like if you're needing to make like some keychains or something to advertise Girl Scouts or otherwise or for your new STEM activities, what you could do is 3D print little like keychains or trinkets just by creating the sketch on a plain surface and then just pulling it out. Um, that can also work. You can kind of incorporate like uh, Illustrator and Photoshop in that kind of sense, um, but a little bit further apart. Um, so what we're gonna talk about now, so the first step is you wanna design or make something. And what we really want from that step is an STL file. And that's the first type of file that we're going to observe today. Um, STL is very important because if you export it to something else, the next program we're going to utilize isn't going to have that, isn't going to detect anything but STL and maybe one other type of uh, file. And so what STLs are is basically a shell of the object you made. So say you designed a little robot and then it creates a shell of that robot and you put that into a second program called Cura. So it's C-U-R-A and we have the install and everything ready for you on the SD card. And that's what we're gonna kind of step through. So Kira is actually a 3D printing slicing software. So basically it tells the printer how to move. So if you don't put it through this program, your printer won't do anything. Tell it basically cut all of these layers into this little robot we have made and then print it off. So it's gonna tell it how many layers it has, where to move on those layers, and it's basically a whole bunch of coordinates that it's going to use. Okay, any questions about that so far? No. They're a little weird topics, so. Yeah, I'm a very visual doing, touching. Exactly. And that's exactly what we're about to do. So usually on Tinkercad, that's something that you kind of have to experience yourself, and that's why we leave it to you. Um, so if you take a look at it, you'll probably understand it a lot better um, than me trying to explain it. If you go ahead and put in that USB real quick, and it should have three <laughs> folders. Uh, this blue thing. Yes, the blue thing. All right. Yep, should be able to plug it in. The black that's sticking out is what that. So Where the little, it, go? it goes inside of the computer on the USB port. So if you take off the other side of the little blue thing, you should see a USB adapter. Okay, oh. it actually is me. Okay, I was looking at the outside of it, okay. Yeah, you're, you're fine. It has a little cover on it. Okay. If that pulls up anything. Okay, so once you plug it in, you should be able to, you can go ahead and click on like your file explorer. And then it should be labeled NWA 3D. Hmm. So if not, what you can also do, 
is if you unplug both and then reinsert the little black piece in the butt of the USB adapter, it should reconnect for you. So sometimes they can be a little finicky. Okay, let me try this again. Yeah, that is sound good So does this have programs that we need to install? Yeah, so it has one program that you need to install and that we're going to step entirely through with you so you can learn about it. You're not going to be able to install it. You should sure. be able to. It well, should we don't have administrator rights. Our tech, like... Ah, okay, that might be an issue then. Um, in that it's case... It's not coming up either. Like when I put it in the side in the USB port, it's not... Try it on the other side. I'll try the other side. So if you don't have admin rights, I guess we could I show you it, but I'd rather you work through it with me. We also have videos that go over the details of how to set it up and how to use it. So I can link you one of those. Um, I just kind of feel like I want to ensure that you guys know what's going on. So did it not work on that side either? Yeah, it's opening. So which one do you want me to open? Okay, so inside of it, you'll notice that there's a couple different things. So you should have a Cura folder, an STL, test prints, and user manual. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Sorry, the connection seems a little bit slow. Yeah, that's better now. All right, so each of those, so inside of the Cura folder is what I would want you to go to and we would install the 15046 that you see. So it says Kira 1504.6. And that's what we would install, but if you guys don't have admin rights, it probably won't allow you. So if it just maximized your screen, hit escape and it'll minimize it. If it just maximized, hit escape, and then it should minimize your screen. Because I my screen with you so you can see what I do while you okay. do it. Yeah. Screen share. Okay. Yeah. So but what what the error it just popped up was not the like you don't have administrator rights error. It said something else. Does yeah so right? if you don't have admin rights it will pull up a user account control and it'll be like hey you can't do this. Um, so if you do have a tech available that'd be nice but otherwise I can send you a follow-up email that's actually has the video linked to it if you would like. This says error opening file for writing. Okay, so it sounds like it's having an error reading the USB and that may be what we're experiencing in the case that it was harder to access. So if that's the case, then probably what you should do is you should pull out the S or USB, reinsert the small micro SD cards, the back of the blue butt to the blue USB and then reinsert both. Okay, you said try to pull out the USB and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you pull out the USB and then unplug the small micro SD card from the back of it. Okay. And then reinsert both. So reinsert the small SD card and then reinsert the USB part. So sometimes the connection between the SD card and the adapter is a little bit weird and it can cause re -writing. Okay, well I only see your screen now, so... So hit the escape button. Did that minimize the maximum screen? Yeah. Okay, cool. And then you should be able to navigate to it. So you want me to hit the one that says the Cura 15.046 with the C beside it, right? Yes. Destination folder is just what it's coming on. So destination folder is basically gonna tell you where it installs. And you can install it just in that regular program file. It's still giving the error opening file for writing error. Okay. It does not need selection error that puts error on that. That seems odd. And it does it do it after you open it? Yeah, after you open it, then hit install, shows the file path, and then when we hit install. 
So it says that. It says they can't write, and then it has the program file. Okay, so it sounds like the file was actually corrupted on the drive, which is either our fault ourselves whenever we copied it over and maybe it didn't get all of the information. And so now it's like half a file. So it's not actually trying to install. Okay. Um, you can download it from online if you would prefer. Um, and it's, it's not too huge, but it is a little bit of a time. So um, if we type in, if you just click on Google, go to your web browser. We're done with, okay. And type in just C U R A and hit enter. And it should should pull up a little page that says here are 3D printing slicing software. Uh-huh. Click on that. And then it pulls you into this area. And you can use 2.7. Would you like to use the newest one or the one we are trying to install? The previous one's a little bit easier to navigate. So why don't we go ahead and go with that one? Okay. So click on view all versions, just right below. Wait a second, I can't tell whose screen I'm on. Okay, view all versions, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first one. And then go down to 10, or we're gonna go down to 15046. And then you can click on that one and then it'll ask you what are you using it for? You can just select that drop down box and say, I don't want to share my information. So go back up. See what it says educational use. Yeah. And then you just click, I don't want to. And then click okay. down. Okay. And then you save the file to wherever you want to save it to and we should be good. downloading okay so let's talk a little bit about what the rest of the steps would be and we can kind of come back to it as it downloads okay so Kara is the second step so once you have that file type that you're utilizing from your design process you're actually going to come back into you would take that small SD card that you have inside of your computer right now and that SD card goes to your printer so that's actually how you're going to print or transfer your files in that step three so you would slice or create the file and prepare it for your 3D printer, and then you would transfer it with the micro SD card, and it would insert into the area directly below the button. So take a look at your printer, you should be able to. So I would down, like I would use, download whatever to this USB, and then it's then when I'm ready to print something, I'm gonna take out the little right. card and the printer. Right, so what I would do in that case is I would take the F USB out of my computer once I have saved the file onto it and then put the SD card into the printer. Does that make more sense? Am I explaining yeah. that right? Yeah, you gotta talk to me like a person who doesn't know anything about this stuff. It's still downloading, so. Yeah, so that's why I kind of want to talk about the next step. So I knew it would be a little while. Um, so once you take the SD card, so if you were to take that small little piece, the micro SD card, and it would insert into your printer below the button. Do you want me to do this now? I just want you to view it now. And you don't have to do it right now. because we'll, we'll still have to save a file anyways. So I'll swap cameras for you. And then I can show you that it's right underneath here. And that's where you would insert your SD card. Okay. So directly below the button. Right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just a really tiny small port that it slides into. Okay. Okay. And that's that would be all of step three. So that's just the transfer to the printer. And then the fourth step would obviously just be to click the printer and tell it to print. And that's as long as you have everything prepared on your printer, and that's where we would kind of move to troubleshooting steps. So that is the second portion of the train. Um, so we still need to cover a little bit about Cura so that we know how to slice files and prepare them for printing. Okay. So how far is your file right now? Mm -hmm. 
Um, am I able to use Chromebooks for this? Chromebooks can you you can utilize Chromebooks for design. You cannot utilize Chromebooks for the slicing software because you have to install it. For the you can't use the uh, Chromebooks for what? For the slicing installation because you need to install a program. So Chromebooks don't allow you to install anything. They're completely web browser based and they don't actually utilize background programs. So we would need a Windows or a Mac computer to use this. Okay. Yeah. So Chromebooks can be used for the design programs I told you about earlier, like Tinkercad and Onshape. They can both use by a Chromebook and then you just export the file to the same drive you're using right now and it would be completely fine. So they can make it and design it and see what they want, but you have to slice it or prepare it for the printer on a different computer. Okay. So that could be like one station. They could be designing on Chromebooks and then take it to the... Right, exactly. So say you have like a computer set up here and then you have your printer here and you can slice everything on this computer and get it ready and then just plug it into the printer. And that's all they have to do. They just need to utilize that wants to transfer it. So. Okay. okay. Yeah, and Tim said that they have probably an old laptop. Okay. Let me okay, it's almost downloaded. Cool. So do you have any questions for me in the meantime about maybe 3D printing in general? Questions, you said? Yeah. I mean, as we're, we're kind of at a lull until we start downloading, until we start installing it. You have questions? Well, so like what? I feel like I've seen that, like seen kids 3D print um, keychains and like this weekend I went to a thing and they were 3D printing sunglasses. Yeah. Like what, like how, what would you suggest sort of starting with or like what is going to draw kids into a program with 3D printers or what would they print to like do like actually create something to go along with something else if that makes sense like aside from the novelty of 3D printing. Mm -hmm. So generally the novelty of 3D printing does attract everyone. It's the idea if they see a printer working they're like wow that's cool how do I use it and really we found the best way for people to or to be pulled into programs that are using 3D printers is for them to actually see the printers in use or to have someone close to them or otherwise designing or making something and then they see it come to fruition. So it's just the fact that you can make something one day and you can have it the exact same day you've made it that makes it so appealing to everyone. So by utilizing that kind of idea, you could even like, uh, I'm using this as a, Example, but you know how Girl Scouts go and sell cookies outside of say Walmart. Now it doesn't require any power or anything, but what they could do is technically if you had power when you were at that Walmart, you could set a 3D printer on your table, you could print off objects while it's printing, and people are going to flock to that idea and see that thing moving. What's this and how does it, you know, how do you use it? So it's more of the interaction of letting people see it and basically utilizing the technology that typically draws them in. Um, certain things like keychains are great to kind of say, hey, we have a 3D printer, and hey, you can make this kind of stuff on it. Um, and then it can really be used in all sorts of varieties. So it kind of just depends on what you're trying to utilize it for. And just by utilizing it, usually you can attract attention. Is there a way to like connection between coding and 3D printers or I mean totally done. Yes and no. Um, everything that we will utilize today does not involve coding or doing any sort of you know programming in any way. Um, in general the only thing that you may see or you may interact with is something called G code and it's just a big list of coordinates that tells the printer how to move and that's it. So there is no like programming involved or scripting.
Um, okay. Other than that, we pretty much have programs that show us like visually how to use the live stuff instead of trying to do any programming. So. Okay. Sweet. Um, I don't think it, my computer, like, I don't think our system's going to allow me to run this because I got the same, um, it installed the Cura and it gave me the same kind of error message that error opening file for writing. And then it has like the destination and it just gives me the option click to abort, to stop the installation, retry to try again, or ignore to skip this file. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, then it sounds like you don't have privileges to install in the path that you're attempting to. So it's basically telling you that you can't edit what that file or folder is or where you're trying to put the information that you're trying to install. So that would mean you would need a user or some admin in order to log in and install it. Yes. Okay. I'll see if I can get in touch with them and um, uh, if they'll kind of screen share with me and get this downloaded. Okay, well, if you would like to do that at a different point in time, um, I can also link you to the video that does the basic setup of Cura, and it also kind of tells you about everything that's going on inside of it, and it should basically lead you, it's going to be the exact same information I tell you in the training. Um, so really, the only left thing is to tell you how to use your printer and how to like set it up and stuff. And I feel like that's some valuable information that I would kind of like to put across to you. And okay. at that at this point in time, since we do have files ready for you on the SD card, you shouldn't need anything else as long as you have it. So we everything the rest of the training just to us in the print. So. Cool. Does that work for you? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, of course. So I'm sorry that it didn't install and it was a little difficult, but all we need to do is we need to do that third transfer. So we need to take the SD card out of the back of our USB. Okay. But I can you leave the USB installed in my computer or do I need to take it out? Um, usually I like to take it out and kind of, you know, put it in a safe place because those little dongles are not good to just leave in your printer or leave into your computer. Okay. And then once you take it out, then we can put the SD card into our printer. Okay. So, the way in which I would put this in is just with the, the, so the gold letters, part inwards. So, the gold part should be inwards and facing down. So, you should see the letters on top when you put it in. Uh -huh. Okay. And then it should just kind of click. Out. Does it need to go click in? Should, okay. Yeah, you okay. Feel it click into place. Okay. Okay. And at this point, we're going to go over the next kind of four things or four methods. So the first one is that you want to make sure all of your Cura settings are correct. So although we can't do that, just that is the first troubleshoot. If something went wrong or your model's messed up in some way or it doesn't print correctly, that's the first thing to check. Second thing that we're going to check is going to be the basic printer inspection. So we're going to mechanically inspect the printer itself. So what we're going to cover, we're going to look at a couple motors. So we're going to look at four motors. We're going to look at three motors and two belts. So you can go ahead and look at your printer. And I'm going to swap cameras so you can view it a little bit better as I go through it. And then we'll kind of just touch base over all of it. All right. So if you're kind of just viewing your printer right now, you should have a blue screen like so, and the fan should be running if it's plugged in. It's not yeah. plugged in. I need to plug it in. Um, I'm not so, sure where to put it in. So if you look at mine, okay. the cord is going in directly behind the screen at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sweet. So it should boot up. You'll hear the fan kick on, and then the screen should be blue. 
and it'll show you a little bit of uh, information about the printer itself. There's not too much information there for us to use right now, but we're going to inspect the mechanically how the printer's working. So first off, of course, the fan should be moving, and then we're going to check out the motors on it and the limit switches. So limit switches tell it when to stop going in a certain direction, and we have three of those. So if we go ahead and take a look at this arm right now, you'll see this x-axis arm that goes all the way across it right here. The bar that goes, we're going to have, this is called the extruder assembly. This main fan piece is called the extruder assembly or carriage. And right next to it, if we look left, we should see a limit switch right here. The clickable. And that's basically when it tells it to stop going left in that direction, right? So if we push that that way, you'll hear it click and it says that's zero. Yeah. Next, if we kind of rotate to the side, you'll notice that there's a white input where the switch is. That's where it plugs into the board. So wire runs from it all the way to the control board. So right inside here. And then if we look a little bit further back, this is our motor that we have. Right here, we want to make sure our motors are plugged in by this white input, and it should also say X on the tag. So these motors are pretty easy to unplug. You don't have to put a whole bunch of effort to unplug it, so that is something that can happen, and that's kind of why we covered this step. Okay, and then if we rotate all the way to the back, you'll be able to see the rest of our motors and limit switches. So here we have the E motor, and you should see a tag that says E on it. And this is, stands for extruder, or basically what pushes the plastic that we put into it all the way to the hot end, or the carriage. So it uses a tube to travel it to the carriage where it's gonna be heated up and extruded. Then directly below that, on the big spiral, we should have this Z motor. That's what moves the X arm up and down. And then directly to the left of the Z motor, you have your Y motor and your Y limit switch. Those should both be good as well. They're right here. And that's going to be all of those. And then the last one that we need to check out is the Z limit switch. And that is underneath the carriage right here above the screen. And that tells it when to stop going down. Okay. Okay. So that's basically. And, go ahead. I'm sorry. In order, like the this yellow, um, is this to carry it? This is to. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's just a. Uh, it's just a handle for you to easier carry it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pairs are really durable and they're pretty strong. So if you choose to, you can pretty much take them wherever you want. Okay. Uh, so now that we've kind of looked at each of the individual parts, so you can also take a look at the belts. So there's going to be a belt on the x-axis and on the y-axis. So this one's x, and this one's y. And we make sure those belts are nice and tight. So they should spring back at the touch. So unless you see anything unplugged or otherwise, then I think we're pretty good in that area. And that's just basic looking at your printer, making sure everything's plugged in and isn't unplugged or otherwise. So if you do have an issue, if it's only printing like in this direction or only in this direction, then probably one of the motors is unplugged, okay? So now what we can cover is we can actually go over leveling the build plate. And this one's a little bit tricky. Can take a little while, but we're going to talk about how to level this assembly here or the X carriage. We're going to level it to the build area. So, this blue surface is what you can build on, and then all of the plastic is extruded from right where this tube goes in, it goes straight down to something called the nozzle. So, if we look underneath this carriage or underneath the fan, you should be able to see this small nozzle right here. Uh huh. And that's the piece that gets really hot and squirts out the plastic. Okay. It's not hot right now because we haven't heated it up or done anything. So we're going to level 
distance from this little knob here to the build area. We're going to make it a 200 micron gap. So it's going to be, and sometimes it can be a little hard, but we're going to use a piece of paper. So just any sheet of paper will work. You know, what in the world did I do with my piece of paper? I don't know. Oh, there it is. So we're going to take a piece of paper and then we're just going to fold it in half. So you can fold it hamburger style. I feel like it works best. And we're going to take this and we're going to go ahead and look at a few things before we use our paper just to make sure that you know where they are. In between the yellow screen, this, we're going to have an adjustment knob that levels the building. So if we look in between the two, you should see a set of screens like this. So this is looking at the undercarriage. And you see the spring right here? This is the area you can adjust it at in order to move it up and down. Now there's also two more here on the there? outside. Yeah. I lost it. Oh, okay. Well, I'll pause for a second, let it catch back up. Okay, you good now? Okay. What were you talking about the knob? So the adjustment knob is in between the yellow area and the y-axis, and you should see a set of springs. So you should see inside of here that there is a spring here, right? Yeah. So that's the hardest one to see, and that's one of three. And then you have two more here on the outside. So I turned the printer to the left, okay. two more right here. And so by adjusting each of these three, which make up a triangle, we can level the build plate to be completely flat to the knob. So it's a little bit confusing because it is shaped in a triangle like so. So if we adjust this one, it changes this corner over here. Okay. okay. So that's the process that we're gonna go through now. And so the first thing that we need, we need to make it go to its origin point, which is right here at the front of the build plate. So click on the button once, If you click on the button once and then go to setup and then choose auto hum. And this is gonna move our printer to its origin point or zero X, zero Y and zero Z. And mine just finished moving, so it takes the longest to move downwards. And then once it's finished moving, then we can choose another setting to unlock it. So if you were to notice that all of these areas, like the extruder assembly and the build plate, are now locked into place so that they don't mess up, so we need to go back to setup and disable motors. So let me know when yours is done moving and now I'll continue. Okay. Okay, so click on the button once more and then go down to setup. And then choose disable mode. And now we should be able to move those freely. So the only one we don't want to move is we don't want to move it up. So we do want it to be at zero or as close as it should be. And then these should both move back and forth. So we can move our X, Y, just not the Z. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to put the little nozzle that we saw earlier, we're going to put it above that first adjustment knob that's inside of here. So if we move this, it should be right about there that the and we want to place it directly above it so that when we adjust it, we can feel the height difference between the two. I 
I feel like mine is set up differently. Let me show you. Sure. Is it how your it, it looks like it's turned, but this is turned the opposite way. Oh, it is. So if you look at it, you see the binder clips that are on it? Yeah. So if you were to take the two binder clips off, one from the back and one from the front, this blue surface is removable. Okay. Yeah, so this is your build surface or what this plastic sticks best to. So I can turn it around or otherwise, and it can, it can be either way. It doesn't matter. Well, now I can't get it back on there. So you it's just matter. slide it here, and if you can't get it underneath the nozzle, you can push down on the build area because, remember, it's on screens. So you can push down on it, and it should slide underneath afterwards. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it seems that your build plate's just a little bit high, and that's actually what we're about to adjust. Okay. Okay. So now we're right above that one spring. Yes, exactly. Right above that spring on the inside. So that that should right. Yep, it should be right about there. Yep, looks good. So now what we're going to do is once you have it above the spring, we're going to put the paper in between the two areas. So we're going to place the paper right where nozzle is, right? So underneath the nozzle. Okay. And if you can't, of course, just push down the build plate and you should be able to slide it underneath. Yep, perfect. So now you probably feel that it has either a lot of resistance or some. Can you slide the paper back and forth at all? Not really. Okay, so that means it's going to be too close. So it's smushing the paper too much. So if we want to lower the build plate, we need to turn that knob to the right. So we need to turn it this direction or counterclockwise. So if you were to reach, reach in between, it can be a little bit hard to get to. And then turn it to the right to lower the build area. So I'm turning the... Um Silver thing that's attached to the spring? Yes. Okay, to the right. And you'll turn it to the right. Lord, I don't know if I can get my hand under there. So if you're having trouble reaching it, what you can do is you can pull the build plate back out. Okay. And then adjust it like you need to. So turn it to the right and then push it back under. And then check it. So just adjust it enough to where the paper can move. Yeah, so you want to feel a drag or like the paper is almost vibrating when you move it. So it should have a certain amount of drag to it. Not a whole bunch, but you should feel resistance between the two. So mine's too far away, so I'm going to hire mine. You should almost like hear the paper dragging against it. Okay, I think it's okay. Okay. So if you feel happy with that one, then leave that one alone and we'll move to the next one. And you, it's easier to get the, the feels here on the outside because they're not hard to reach. So in order to, so we're gonna slide this, the extruder head over to that new spring, just like so, and line it up. And then again, we're gonna do the piece of paper underneath. Um, they're calling me from the IT place. Can I answer it? Yeah, go ahead. No worries. This is Kristen. Oh, hey, how are you, Ben? I'm good. How about you? Pretty good. I'm doing a tutorial right now with this 3D printer. Um, I don't, I'm trying to download a software, but it won't let me. Okay. Um, I can definitely help you with that. You want to get me connected? Yeah, let me find the... Hey, um, Michael, I'm going to connect them. They can screen share with me so that I can get that Cura downloaded. Sure. What is the icon I'm looking for, Ben? 
Um, you're probably looking for it, something that says eager or Dacia support. Mm -hmm. um, if that's not on your desktop, then we'll need to get to our website. Okay. Okay. Let me get to the website. Okay. And it's just the Dalphina.com. Client support. Client support and then download for PC. Um, it's rotating. Okay. I don't know what's opening right up. Um, I'm not sure. Does it say run at the bottom? Or is it... mm -mm. No, as a matter of fact, my computer is freezing now. I have about a million things open. Um, Michael? Yes. Um, okay, I can see your video now. Um, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm sorry. My computer was frozen for a second. Okay, download for PC. Okay, I'm opening up the Team Viewer. So, um, Okay, Ben, it's 561-758-289. All right. Okay, so it's this uh, C down here. Okay. One second. Okay. One second. I'm not quite connected yet. Okay. Okay. So it's this C thing down here. Here, I'm trying to set that up. Okay, could I run for a second? Yeah, I just need to find my video back so I can get back to my wire. I don't know where. The... Michael? Yeah, I'm still here. I can't find the video. I hear it's you. The Zoom meeting? Yeah, it's just it's giving me the option to join a meeting or sign in, but I can hear you. So it may be in a different tab. So if you click on the little bubble zoom icon. There I, there you are. Perfect. Oh, you disappeared. There you are. Hey. Okay. All right. Okay, uh, Ben, I'm about to uh, get out of this, okay? Okay, Ben. All right. Thank you. Okay, I'm back, Michael. So I'm gonna try to put the paper here. Yep, and you're going to try and adjust it to the exact same resistance you had on the inside point. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's there. Yeah, that's correct. If it's already there, don't adjust it anymore. Just move to the next one. I mean, it's a little tighter, but let me see. Okay, so now just move it to the back spring. Yep, to the back last one. Yep, so you basically move it back and in a little bit. And then check there, too. Hey Ben. Um, you download this uh, installer from or two. Uh, from the Cura website. I didn't install it anywhere because it wouldn't let me. 
Okay. Um, which website is that? Uh, if you just uh, Google Cura, it's on my Chrome. Okay. Ultimaker. Oh, no. Gotcha. All right, I found it. Michael, I'm just really having trouble with this one right here. I can't tell what is hanging it up back here. Okay, I think I can get Michael. Okay, excellent. So once you have every kind of point, and I like to check the middle at that point too. So once I feel that every point's okay, then I check the middle that it feels right. And so I'm um, checking the middle real quick and it feels good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of talk a little bit about filament and how to load it in and prepare it for printing. Okay. So we got this area level so that it'll print and the plastic will lay down onto the surface. And next what we're going to do is we're going to load some filament. So this is the fourth kind of step. So first one's Kira. Second one was inspection. Third one is leveling the build plate. And fourth is filament. So what we're going to do in order to do that is we're going to move this X bar up a little bit before we heat it up so that we don't hurt our build surface. So if you click on the button once and go down to controls, And then down to move axis. Move axis and then move one millimeter. And then move Z. So it might time out. They like to time out and go back to the main screen sometimes. So yeah. Okay, it's on Z. Okay, and then just turn that up to let's say 20. And then you click the button one more time to go back to the next screen, and then you can pan back through the screens just by clicking. Okay. Okay. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to setup. And we're going to choose the option preheat PLA. Once you choose preheat PLA, it'll bring you back to the home screen. Uh -huh. And it'll tell you that the nozzle at the very top of it, the little emblem here, it's heating to 220 degrees. So at the top of it, it should say 220. And then the number below the little nozzle diagram should be moving upwards. Is that true? Yes. Excellent. So now it's just going to heat until the designated temperature. 220 is the temperature we like to print this PLA or the type of plastic we're using. So PLA is polylactic acid and it's cornstarch. Okay. So now that it's heating up, we should be ready whenever it's at 220 to load more filament in. So inside of that setup area, if we navigate back there real quick, so if we get, click the button and go to setup, inside of here, you'll notice something also called preheat soft pool. Now this value changes it, instead of heating to 220, it heats it to 100 degrees. The reason why you would heat it to 100 degrees is that it's a transition phase for this type of plastic. So it's moving from a liquid or from a solid to a liquid. And at that point in time, we like to remove the material from the printer to pull out all the old color or the old filament or anything that you may be trying to remove. Okay. So that is nice to remove your filament and also to make sure you don't have any clogs. So that's all they soft. 
So another way to help prevent or put out old colors or to remove colors is to push extra filament through. So yours should be right around 200, 200 degrees now. And we can go ahead and try loading our filament. Okay. So I have the spool right here. So I don't know if you constructed your spool holder or not. No, I didn't know what this was. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so if I can show you real quick. So all it is is you have two sides and a base. So here's the base and the two sides. You basically okay. slide the nut and bolt inside of that area and then tighten the outside bolt. And there should be a toolkit that came with the printer and it's going to be the second smallest Allen key. Let me know if you want, to, want me to explain it the other way. <laughs> okay, let me see. Um... Well, they're a little bit weird. Like it took me like just the first time I put one together. So I promise I'm not. I'm like, the type of person that when I have to put together furniture or something, I'll always like put together one piece the wrong way and have to get <laughs> So give me a second. All right. Uh, you can take the bolt off of the bottom. Like, off of do I need to take this bolt off? No, you leave the bolt on. You should be able to slide it in. So I'll show you. Okay, they like ordered me a desk from China for this office and it took me like three hours to put the thing together. <laughs> well, I mean, at least that's a good excuse since the directions are probably in Chinese, right? So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so here, if we kind of, I'll take it loose here. So I like to push it all the way to the far edge. So it should be all the way out. So I have my bolt or my nut as far as it can go but not coming off. Okay. And then what I do is I take the base plate, which is one that has the circles in it, and I line the two up like so. And I just kind of let it fall into place, the nut, and then slide the two together. So like, let it just fall into the hole it's supposed to be in. And then it should just slide together. That work out for you? Not yet. So if you don't put it out all the way, usually it can be a little bit mad about it. I just kind of take it like this and let it slide down into it. Okay. Got yep. it. Sweet. It feels like it's a little loose, but I think when I put the other side. Yeah, if you tighten it, if you tighten the bolt in from the outside, it'll make it not loose. So after you have it inside the spots, you tighten it from the outside with an Allen key and it should sink it up to where it's nice and sturdy. Okay. So the second smallest in the toolkit. If you tighten it too tight, it will crack because this is just made of acrylic. Yeah. Wait. And then there should be like a weird crossbar. Okay, I'm trying to tighten it. Okay, let me slide down. Okay. Yeah. Not to break your concentration. Sorry. Um, but I've got that Kira install. Okay. Uh, what else do you need to install? Um, yes. Hey, Michael, I'll need to put back in this USB so he can install the other program, the 
Tinkercad, or should we just go online to do that? No, Tinkercad is just online. You don't need to download anything. Okay, so that's the only thing that needed to be downloaded to my... Yeah. That's okay. it. Okay, yeah. that's all. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, no problem. Good one. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay, thank you. So I have that. I'm still trying to fix this thing, though. Yeah, sure. So we hit the hour mark just now, but I'll stay with you as long as you're available to until you feel comfortable. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Just show me how to put this filament in there because I definitely won't know that. Um, yeah. I mean, if you feel like you need to zip out of the way or something or you need to do something, let me know and we can follow this up any other time. I, it doesn't matter to me. Okay. Yeah. Today, today's Tuesday, right? It is. Okay. I think I'm good on today. Sweet. If you are, I mean, I'm fine. Oh, yeah. Schedule it another time soon. Um, no, okay. Let me try to tighten this bad boy. I like 3D printing. That's why it's my job. Yeah, you got a good job, man. I'm a little hesitant about it myself, but <laughs> I guess once I figure it out, I'm just afraid about teaching this to somebody else. But if I practice, well, you don't have to teach it to somebody else. If you don't want to, you can call us up and we'll teach them for you. That's probably what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and it usually goes pretty quick with usually students. They're so fast yeah. picking up things. My yeah, I mean, some of the girls probably can teach me how to do stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. Really and they're so technology savvy now, so. Yeah. Yeah, they become super good at that kind of thing so quick. Yeah. Okay. I've got this. So what do I need to do with this? Um... Cool. Once you kind of have the little housing together, then okay. if you have the crossbar that looks like this, yep. you slide that in between the roll of filament. So right here. And then you let it just kind of sit down on the area so it can spin freely. Okay. Yep. That's it. All right. So. so you can unwrap your plastic if you haven't already. Okay. Okay. And now what we're going to do is, if you notice, it's probably poking through the side. So one of the sides. And this is the best way to, to store filament. So if you don't put it through one of these sides, it'll unspool and then it'll cause it to get tangled and it'll create like a knot in the filament when it's trying to print. And that'll cause like your print to fail. So preferably just store it like that. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and undo it from that area. So just pull it out of the hole that it's in okay. and let it hang freely so that we can put it in the printer. And on my end, my end's kind of weird and tangly like this. Yeah. So I want to clip it to a nice end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the flesh shears that I had and I'm going to clip it at a pretty heavy angle so that it comes to a point. Like so. And so, oh, what a terrible point. Like that. So now I kind of have a little point that's going to be easier to feed in. Okay. So once I have that ready, we have our printer seated up and it should be ready to go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, here in the back, if we look at the E motor, whenever I told you about that earlier, You'll notice that there's a yellow trigger and a spring on it, right here. So, oops, now I'm gonna mess up my stuff. So, what we have to do is we need to squeeze the trigger back here and feed it through the hole right next to the big spiral. So you should be able to turn it to the right and be able to see the hole that's right next to the big spiral. And then you'll squeeze the trigger to release the pressure and push it through. So I'll give you a better bird's eye view here. So we're just on the side of the printer here. And what I yeah. basically 
place it through the beginning hole, like so, mm -hmm. and squeeze the trigger and push it through to the other side. And it's just kind of up against the other side, right? So, yeah, it should just kind of push against this. Oh, okay. I see. It's going, yeah, it goes so through this white tube. Yeah, and then you push it all the way through the white tube. Okay. Yep. So once you push it all the way through the white tube, by holding the trigger down until you get to the very end. Oh my goodness. Sometimes it feels like it's forever. And then it should basically get to where you feel, it feels tough to push through now, right? So if it feels tough, go ahead and push it some more to push out the old color that we tested it with. Oh, okay. And this is that other step I was talking about. This pushes out our old color and puts in new filament and can push out clogs. Okay. Okay. So now if you look at your nozzle that we rose off the build plate, now you can kind of see why we did it. Because we squirted filament everywhere. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of have a blob of spaghetti now. Super cool looking. Yeah. Blob of spaghetti. Cool. And now... We have our filament threaded through. So did yours change colors? Well, I put yellow in, and that's what was already in there. Yellow came out? Yeah. Wow, that's unheard of. I think, I've, I think I, every training I've done, they've gotten a different color come out. That's really yeah. weird. I think yellow was the test color. Yeah, exactly. That's okay. great. All right. Well, so what you can do now is we can schedule the print. So basically we had pushed the filament in. I talked about a soft pool. I talked about pushing extra filament through to clear colors. And then the only other tip I have is that inside of your toolkit that you had, you should have a small little needle like this. Okay. And this is only used if you get a really bad cloth. So this is used to floss the nozzle or basically push stuff out of the way when it's heated up. Okay. So if you do need to use this, basically you would raise this bar like we did earlier, as high as possible. Yeah. And then you would put the nozzle inside of it, pliers or tweezers or something to floss the nozzle in and out until you clear the clock. Okay. okay. Awesome. So we don't need to do that. We don't have to go over that. That's just in case. And now what we can do is we have to get it. It's heated. And it's not printing, which is a dangerous way to keep it. It's not too bad. So if you have it heated, not moving, and filament inside of it, and you leave it here for maybe like 20 minutes, it's going to clog your nozzle. So this is the case where you would want to not do that. So make sure that if you walk by a printer and you know that it's heated and it's not doing anything, the best method to do it is just unplug it. So the fail safety for these printers, if they're screaming at you, if they're dying, or if they're yelling, then just unplug it. It's your fail safe, okay? okay. It's not going to hurt the printers in any way, and it might save them if they're doing something bad. Okay. Awesome. So now all we need to do is select our print from SD and see if it lays down on the build plate. Okay. Okay, so the one thing I like to do is always watch the first layer to make sure that it will finish the print. So what we're gonna do is we can click on the button. And then we can scroll down to print from SD, fourth print step, right? And we can click print from SD card. Okay. And then we can go to test prints because we didn't get it, we didn't get to use Cura today, so we can go to test prints. Okay. And then we can select the six sided dice. I like printing. So how long does it take? I'm sorry? How long does it usually take to print? So I think the dies take about 20 minutes or 14, one of the two. That doesn't take very long. Not this size, anyways. It depends on how big and how complex the model is.
So I think it's like no is this I think okay. Yep. It's starting. So it just kind of moves, the motor moves to where it needs to be. Like it doesn't, it'll move that plate where it needs to be, right? To print? Yes. Yes. Okay. You don't need to move it. You don't need to do anything once you click print. Okay. So how's it printing? Is it laying it down? So I like looking to the side of it like this and seeing if there's plastic coming out. I think so. It's like doing it directly on the blue thing. Yeah, do you see plastic? I believe so. Yeah, if you see yellow, that's a good thing. If you don't see yellow, it's probably too close. So if you don't see any plastic at the very first of the print, then it's probably too close. Mm, yeah, I don't think it's working. I don't, I can't tell, like I, touching the blue thing. Yeah, it usually. So let me go to my side view of this. So can you see the plastic that mine has on it right now? Let's make it a little star in the middle. It's hard for me to see. Yeah, it's because mine's like the same color as the words. So that doesn't really help. I need to get a different color for training. So depending on if it's too close, then it won't really print out the yellow at the very beginning. And if it's too far away, you'll definitely see it, but it won't be sticking to the build area. I'm not sure what to do. I, I can't tell. So if it's too close, what do you do? So you're just going to twist the knobs at the bottom and twist them righty tighty to pull the build plate down. And so that would allow it to print out better. Because what's happening is the nozzle is so close to your build plate, it's not being able to squirt any plastic out. And so usually you only have to adjust them up maybe like a quarter of a turn. Uh. Do you see it a little bit now? Yeah, I mean, I see like there's like a line of filament hanging out of it and it's doing something down here. Yeah, if you want to actually print up, pick up the printer and move it towards me, and I can actually look at it if you would like. Can you see it? Uh, if you could pull it up a little bit, I might be able to. Is that better? Yeah. Let's go ahead and stop the print and look at it. So click on the button once. Yeah, you can put it back down. Woo! If you click the button once and select stop print, then it should stop the printer. It should stay still now. And, yeah. And so mine's locked into place. I can't move anything right now, right? Okay. So if you want to move it, go to setup and disable motors. And then I should be able to move it again. And then go ahead and take a look at the build plate and, and see if you have a little block. It's very, very, very faint. A very faint block? Yeah. Okay, so it was probably too close. Okay. If you print anything out, it was probably too close, unless there yeah. was plastic. Yeah, no, it didn't do what yours did. Yeah, so mine has a little block here in the center. So if you if you don't have spaghetti and you don't have a block right now, then we need to re-level. Okay. So, what I like to do when I re-level is I like to use my eyeballs. Um, I prefer to use them. The paper can be deceptive sometimes. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to schedule a print, and we'll schedule the keychain this time so it can go in a wider area. 
Yeah, this stuff is on the right place for this. Yeah, there you go. Okay. And so you can always spool the filament back up if you just turn this. If you just turn this and kind of like spool it back up into it, so it's not kind of stringing everywhere. It helps. Yeah, just rewind it. Be perfectly fine. <laughs> so take it off the spool and then just roll it up again and then just kind of take it and just roll the big black thing until you get it all spooled up next to the printer again. So instead of trying to break the knot, if you rotate the spool of filament itself, it should undo itself. Okay. So yeah, that's one trick to it. Because if you try and unbreak the knot by going the wrong way, then it'll snap. Yeah, I just did. That's fine. Don't put any more filament in. It's fine. Actually, okay. you have hanging out of it right now, we'll probably print what we need to. Okay. No kidding. Like, it doesn't take a whole bunch of filament. Okay. Yeah, so that's perfect. That's fine. And then you can kind yeah. of set it to the side. What about this filament? Do I order this from y'all when I need more, or how does that work? So you can order it from a lot of different places. It kind of depends on what you want to do. Okay. Uh, if you have a 3D printing shop near you in Fort Smith, I'm not sure if you do, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you can also order it online. If you just look at the type of filament, which is PLA, okay. you'll be able to find a lot of sites with it. Um, of course, we would recommend ourselves, but that's the spiel, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, as far as space goes underneath here, is there yeah. a good, like, is it like how, how far? So it's, it's a gap that you, it's, it's like a millimeter gap. Like if you were looking at it, you'd look for a millimeter. Like it needs to be very small. So what we're gonna do, go ahead and just click on the button again. Okay. And go back to print from SD. Press prints and then go to the keychain. Select the keychain. Okay. So print. I need to choose my keychain again. And it should start pretty quick because whenever you stop the print, it doesn't cool it off so that you can start another one really quick. Okay. If you just stop the print, it's not going to cool it. That's a caliper. So a caliper, that's just used to make very small measurements. So it can measure anywhere down to a, a, tenth, a tenth of a millimeter. Oh, okay. Yeah, or a hundredth of a millimeter, one of the two. So if you go ahead and look at that first layer, is there any plastic on the build area? It should make a pretty oh. large square. No, yeah. it's not. Okay. If you don't see any, then turn the knobs all to the right a quarter inch or a quarter of a turn. Yeah, all of them. And then the one on the inside, that one's the, one on the inside's the hardest. Yeah. All right. Okay, and see if there's plastic coming out now. No, I mean, is it not in there all the way? No, you said you squirted out yellow plastic earlier, right? Yeah. Yeah, it should be fine. Well, it's not doing anything. So go ahead and twist it again. So go ahead and twist it another quarter inch turn.
not negative. Okay, go ahead and do it again. So we're gonna pull it down until we start seeing plastic coming out. Okay. So unless it's just not fed through all the way, it should be coming out right now. It's not, that makes me think that this isn't in all the way. Okay, then squeeze the trigger and push it through. So if you squeeze the trigger in the back and then you can just push it. Is it still hard to push? Yeah, it's hard to push. Yeah, then it's probably squirting out plastic. It's probably just causing back pressure. Trying to come out now. Yeah, so it was, it was just really close. So if you want to, you can trip again, twist it another quarter turn. Or you can twist it another quarter turn on the bed. So what's happening is since the bed's so close, you have basically, this is your nozzle and the bed's so close, it's basically scraping into the bill plate and causing the plastic not to come out. Yeah, it is, it's scraping the bill plate. So, yeah, so you I mean, just I twist it to the right to make it go down. And this is basically hot leveling or adjusting it while it's printing. And once we get to the spot, you should see plastic come out. So um, until you see yellow come out, I would keep, keep adjusting it. I can see that where the impression is that there's barely any stuff coming out. Yeah, it's just it's just because it doesn't have enough room. Or you turn it until it gets to that point, then you should be able to. Can you see it? Maybe a little bit. I see a little bit of yellow going down. Yeah. Yeah, it's just close. So keep making it less close. Keep going down. Uh huh. So are you, you're twisting it the right way. Yeah, you're twisting it in this direction. Counterclockwise. Yes, perfect. Okay. So if it's still not really printing off yet, I would just do half turns until you see it. Mm, I think it's starting to work now. Yeah, I see a string of filament hanging out there. Yeah. Yeah, it's starting to. Okay. So it was just a little bit high. So in that sense that the build plate was too close to the nozzle, it may have been that the, it, the this area had moved up when we were messing with it, and that would make it to be off level. Okay. So, at this okay. point, what I would do, if you feel like it's close enough, then I would stop the print okay. and scrape the build plate clean. So use the little tool that we gave you, the scraper tool. Just move this off to the side, the print head, and then scrape off the plastic. That's it. So it might be hard to get off because it is uh, so close, or it was so close. Yeah, it totally um, engraved into this blue thing. Yeah, we had it way too close then. Sorry about that. Does that matter? Is that going to mess up the... No. Okay. No, this one even has the engraving of like a triangle on it, so... It 
doesn't mess it up. This one has a pretty triangle in it too. So. Okay. From one of the things we printed. It's no big deal. It's not gonna hurt it. It's not gonna affect the print jobs. Okay. I just didn't know if it was gonna make like an indentation on the bottom of the other print jobs. You know what I mean? Um, it might, but I don't think it'll be very noticeable at all. I've never noticed this falling onto the other ones. Maybe I could look at that. <laughs> it kind of does, but it's not really like a noticeable difference. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's not noticeable. So well, once you I need to get another one of these, could I order one? Oh yeah, if you need another one, you can order one. Usually they last a while though. So I like to use, if I'm scraping stuff, I like to use the edge that's, um, so had this kind of serrated edge, or not serrated, excuse me, but the plugged edge on top and then just, and usually it comes out best. And sometimes you might have to hold the build plate to keep it from moving. So one thing, if you dig into it like that, that you'll scrape an area off the build plate and then that really will leave an indentation. But I try and keep it flat and if I need to, I'll just barely raise it like this in order to scrape and then put it back flat. Well, I got a tough place on here that's not really coming off. Does it matter? No, if we print over it and we print it correctly the next time, it'll peel it off anyways. Okay. Yeah, so like if you put another print job over the top of that one, it should pull that plastic up with it when you remove it. Okay. Yeah. All righty. So I can just practice tomorrow with some stuff, I guess. I'm sorry? I can just practice tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, that'd be excellent. So it, I will send you the video for the Kira. And if you would like to, we can go over this stuff again, or we can have a follow-up once you feel more comfortable or otherwise. Um, we're, we're happy to be here. Um, whatever you guys need, just contact us. We can, we can help you out. So if you want to train a new student or something on this, then we'd be happy to do it for you. Okay. Okay? Great. Let me know if anything changes. Make sure to unplug your computer if it's still hot. So that's your test rocket. So that's the rocket that we provide with the printers, and it shows you that the printers work. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Huh? Awesome. Well, so that's a USB cable that you can plug into the printer and into the computer. Um, we like to use the SD cards because if the computer falls asleep, if the computer dies, if anything happens in between the connection of the printer and the computer, it'll stop the print job. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, so if you put put it on an SD card, it's pretty safe to say that it'll print the whole thing. Okay. 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 Sweet. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I'll send you a follow-up email. I'll include the Kira video. And then if you need anything else or you need any other tips and tricks, let me know. Okay. Thanks, Thanks. Michael.